Welcome to my introduction to machine knitting series where I show you how to get started with the LK150. This tutorial is specific to the LK150, but a lot of the information will transfer to other machines. If you haven't seen the rest of the series, go check it out. There's a link in the description. Today, we're going to make one of the easiest sweaters you can make on a knitting machine. We're working with my drop shoulder boat neck sweater pattern. This pattern is available for free on my website. There's a link in the description. I made a tutorial for this pattern a while back, but it was one of the first videos that I ever made, and I like to think that I've gotten better at making videos since then. My patterns aren't just patterns, they're pattern generators. You enter your measurements and the information about your gauge and it will create a pattern specifically for you. This means that it will work with any yarn on any knitting machine for any sized person. It also means that you can't skip the swatching step. This sweater uses a few techniques. First, a folded hem, which we covered in the hat video, stripes, increases, a stable bind off, that is a bind off that is not stretchy, and short rows. You can skip the short rows if you really want to, but they're a lot easier on the machine than they are by hand. Before we get started, let's go over the yarn rules one more time. For this particular machine, you want yarn weights two or three. And while you're still a beginner, you want to work with acrylic or wool and no novelty yarns, only plain old yarn. I'm working with a few colors of Hobie Winter Glow Wool Acrylic Blend. I'm not quite sure what I wanna do yet, so I got a couple different colors. And like I mentioned in my intro video, the yarn rules that I've given you are really only for when you're getting started. And this particular project breaks one of the yarn rules. This yarn is weight four. As you get more comfortable with your machine, you can take more risks with the yarn and the kind of things that you're making. This yarn comes in cakes, so I shouldn't have to rewind it, but I'm gonna see how the swatching process goes. Swatching serves multiple purposes. It's so that you can figure out what tension and what density you want your swatches to be, but it's also so that you can get more familiar with the yarn and the way that it feeds and the way that it knits as you go. All right, let me set up my machine. Ah, dropping yarn. If you need a refresher on how to do this, you can check out my unboxing video or you can look at your manual. Manual. Always hold on to this. You need your bag of tools, your weights, and for the stripes, we will need these yarn parker things that fit over here. And I will show you how to do the stripes when we get to that point. My machine is all set up. I have the most of this stuff, so it's going to be the main color for my sweater. And I'm gonna make a couple swatches to start practicing the techniques that we're going to use in this sweater. But first, I need to set up my other camera. <laughs> all right, all right, more cameras, always more cameras. For this swatch, I'm gonna need my one by one tool and my latch hook tool. So this yarn's already in a cake, which means it should it should feed nicely, but we're gonna see because I haven't worked with this before. So let me try to find the end. Oh, we get barf. And there's the end. And this is just gonna be some barf, but it's just a swatch. So if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. And then feed it through the feeder. And if you need a refresher on how to feed it through the tension mast, go check out my unboxing video. Okay, so we've got it fed and I'm just gonna put it up in the clip up here, which you can't see because of my camera angles. <laughs> so we're gonna do the same simple cast on for the swatch that we always do for swatches and bring out every other needle on either side of zero. And then because this is a fairly thick yarn, I'm gonna make my first tension swatch at 
nine and then I feed it in to the feeder and then I'm going to hang my weights try not to get caught and put the end of the yarn in the clip over here and then we're going to bring the rest of the needles out into work So we can see this is already a really loose swatch. You can see straight through it. I think I'm going to turn the tension a little tighter. Let's call this a seven and go from there because I doubt I'm gonna knit a sweater that's this loose. It's still a little loose, but we're gonna see how this blocks because it might fluff up a bit. It's starting to pull in, so I'm going to add weights on the sides. Okay, that swatch is probably about big enough. Time to put in my eyelets. Remember, we mark these swatches with eyelets so we know what tension it was knit at, so we can recreate it after it's been blocked. So starting two over from the edge, I pull out the needle and then push it back in with my other hand and transfer it over one. And I'm going to do seven of these. Seven. And then make sure that all the needles are lined up in the same line. And then knit a few more rows. Okay, now we come to the first technique that we're going to practice. The last time we made swatches, we just gathered them all up on a long tail of the yarn. But this time we need to practice the stable bind off. That is a bind off that is not stretchy. And we're going to do that with the latch hook tool. So the first thing we're going to do is bring all the needles all the way out. Here they are. And then pull your yarn out of the carriage. And then what we want to do is bring this forward a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to stick the latch hook through the loop on the needle and then bring the yarn over the hook and pull through. And then as we go, when we get to the next needle, we're going to go through the loop and pull the yarn through. So we have the working yarn on top and we have our current loop on the bottom and we're going to come up under the next needle and go through the loop, come all the way up so the latch is past the loop there and then hook it over the working yarn and pull it through all the loops and then go through. And let me get you a closer angle on that. Here we have a loop on the latch hook tool and we have our working yarn above here. What we're going to do is when we get over to the next loop, we're going to push up through the loop, push the latch hook tool so the latch is past both of the loops. We've got this loop down here and there's one on the needle. Grab the working yarn and then pull it through both loops and just keep going that way. We come up through a loop around the needle and then back through. And this is gonna take some time and energy to sort out. And don't worry, we've got a couple swatches to make using this technique before we get to the final sweater. And once you get the hang of it, it gets a little easier. And this is easiest for me from right to left, but it might be easier for you from left to right. So just try it out and see how it goes. We've gotten to the end. I've got one last stitch left. I'm going to go up through the last stitch, grab the working yarn and pull it through. 
Now all of my stitches are bound off, but this is still going to unravel if it goes too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one more loop through like a chain stitch. And then I'm going to cut the tail here and then just pull this all the way through. Now all of my stitches are secured and we can pull the weights off and the cast on comb and then push the needles back and it should just pop off the machine. Okay, there we go. There's our first swatch. And this cast on edge does not really stretch. It'll stretch a little bit, but not enough to like get stretched out of shape. Okay, let me grab another color. I like this pinkish purplish. Pull the band off. Find the end. I'm gonna feed this into my tension mast and then I'm going to show you how to do stripes. And so far this yarn is feeding nicely from the original cake, so I probably don't need to rewind it. Let me get cast on again and then let me show you how to do stripes. So the first thing I'm gonna do so I don't forget is change my tension. So I'm changing my tension down to six because this next swatch serves two purposes. It's going to be a tension swatch and it's also going to be practicing stripes. All right, let's get set up to do another swatch. So we bring out every other needle and then we grab our main yarn and put it in the feeder, knit one row, put in the cast on comb and into the notch there. And then every other needle comes out. And we need a few rows. So we've got a few rows going here. And now what we want to do is stripes. When we're doing stripes in a garment, we don't want to have to break the yarn every time we start a new stripe because that'll create a lot of extra ends to weave in. So instead what we do is we park the yarn. We like tuck it under the edge of the machine while we keep knitting. But we want to be able to pick up the yarn on the same side that we put it down. I have my main yarn here and I've knit a couple rows and now I want to start the next color. So I'm going to pull this yarn out of the feeder. I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to tuck it along the side of the machine and make sure that it stays out of the way of the brushes on the carriage. And now there's nothing in the feeder and if I were to run this across it would all fall off, but we're not going to do that. Instead we're going to take the next color and feed it into the yarn feeder and then keep knitting. And then I'm going to clip it in with the other original yarn. And then we can knit a few rows for this stripe. And now I want to switch back to my main color, but I parked my main color over on the right side. If I wanted to do three stripes of the pink and then switch back to my other yarn, I'd have to break it or I'd have to start another skein on the other side. But because I don't want to have too many ends to weave in, I'm just going to knit an extra row. And that way, when I get to this side, I can just pull the pink yarn out of the feeder, park it behind the machine, and pick up my original color. And this way we're just carrying the yarn along the edge of the stripe. And then when I put it back in the feeder, I can keep going. And what I think I want to do is like, I don't know, four rows of my main color and then two rows of my contrasting color based on how much I have. So I've gotten to the end of this stripe and I'm going to pull my main color out and then park it next to the machine and then bring the secondary color back in and put it in the feeder. We have to be careful to get these back in the feeder because if they're not actually clipped in there, it's just going to drop the whole thing off the machine. And if that happens, it's not the end of the world. 
machine editing goes pretty quickly. If you drop it off the machine, you can just start over and get back up and running pretty quickly. So here we have two colors of my second, two rows of my second color, and then I'm gonna pop that out. And get my main color back. Try not to twist these up in the yarn mast. It's not the end of the world, but it's a struggle sometimes. Four, let's call that six. Six, and the main color goes back. The second color goes back. Maybe two. Here's my stripes from the back. Uh, this swatch is about big enough, so I'm going to put in my eyelets and then do my bind off. I knit this one at tension six, so I need six eyelets. Remember, thumb on top, fingers on the bottom. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Make sure all of the needles are in a line and I'm gonna put in my one last stripe here. Uh-oh. Uh, all right, I should explain how this works. So I didn't have my yarn all the way in the feeder and something went wrong and now I have dropped some of it off the bed. And if this happens to you and it's frustrating, you can just stop and deal with it later, but I am going to try to repair this. And what you can do is stick your transfer tool into the loops, like find an intact loop and then put it back on the machine. And see, I'm carefully holding it up because if the weight's on it, it'll more it'll unravel more quickly. Okay, so all the we have loops back on the needles, and you got to be careful with these ones because they are out past the latch. And if you pull them all the way back in, they will just fall off. So I'm going to reset these by putting the transfer tool on the needles and then pulling them back in and then carefully putting them back. So it is possible to recover from mistakes on the knitting machine. It is just a struggle sometimes. And these ones haven't knit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out my yarn and then unknit by carefully pulling up and what you're doing is pulling the last loop off the needle and pulling the previous one back onto the needle. And that's as far as it didn't knit. And then I'm gonna line these back up and then I'm just gonna knit manually by pushing the needle out past the latch and then pulling it back. And your loops aren't gonna be consistently sized with this, just get it as close as possible. And there we go, we're back. Part of the problem is that I didn't have the edge weights on, so I'm gonna add those now for my last few rows. And then put my yarn back in the feeder, make sure, making sure it's all the way in this time. Come on. Okay, and we're back on the carriage. We're back on the bed and get into the last row of that stripe. And look at that, you can't even tell that there was a massive mistake there. I'm going to cut my pink yarn because this is my last stripe and just let it dangle because it's not going to unravel and then bring in my main color one last time for a few more rows. Okay, 
So my swatch is complete and I'm going to do the same latch hook bind off. So bring all the needles forward and then bring the yarn forward a little bit. Pull it out of the carriage so it's free here. And then take my hook and bring it over top and then go through the first loop up. Grab my working yarn and pull it down through both loops. Through a loop. Up. Through a loop. Through a loop. This is working well because my yarn is at a good tension. If your yarn is too tight, if your tension is too tight, this is really going to be a struggle. Come on. I've got my swatches, both to practice technique and to figure out gauge. I was worried that this one was going to come out a little too Where's Waldo, but it's looking pretty good. And then this last one. Now it's time to block these swatches. So right now these are all stretched out from being on the machine, being weighed down vertically and being stretched out horizontally. This particular yarn needs to be hand washed, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to let these dry and come back and see how the yarn behaves once it's been blocked. My swatches are a wool acrylic blend and I don't want them to felt. And I haven't worked with this yarn before, so I don't know what it'll take to get it to felt. So I'm going to wash these in cold water with a little bit of wool wash. And there's a link to this in the description. That's probably too much. And now let this sit for a few minutes and then rinse them out. Okay, I've gotten most of the soap out. Now we don't want to wring these swatches because it'll further distort the stitches. We're just gonna squeeze them. Try to get most of the water out. And then I'm gonna get the rest out with a towel. This is just a kitchen towel. Here are my swatches. I'm going to gently reshape them. I'm not trying to achieve any particular size or shape, so I'm just going to lay these out. Roll up the towel and use that to squish out some more water. Okay, now these are just going to sit and dry, and they take as long as they take. It might be a day, it might be two, but I'm going to come back when they're done and figure out which one I like the best. So many people skip this when they're hand knitting, and I understand why, because it takes time, but it's the only way to really get something that you're happy with and something that fits. While we're waiting for our swatches to block, let's practice the new techniques that are in this sweater. I'm working with some random yarn. This doesn't matter. This is not going to be the yarn that we're working with in the end. This is for my swatch. This is for my waist yarn. Before we cast on, let's talk about short rows. Short rows are much easier on the machine than they are to do by hand, but we need to get the carriage set correctly. So the Machine knitting carriage has a couple different levers on the side that do different things. Right now, in their current configuration, if the needles are out in working position here, they will knit. That's fine. And if they are all the way out 
at the front, they will still knit. The way that we do short rows is we bring needles all the way out to the front and we don't want them to knit. And in order to do that, we need to change the levers on the carriage. If you're working with an LK150, you want to change these front levers. If you're working with any other knitting machine, you want to look at your manual and see what you need to do to put the carriage into hold position. So for this one, we need to push both of these levers back. And there's a little indication on the side that forward is position two and backward is position one. And we need to do this on both sides so that it will not knit back from hold in both directions. There are some cases when you want to knit back from hold in one direction but not the other, but in this case we want both. So both of these get pushed back as far as they go. And now, when needles are all the way forward, they won't knit. And we just need to leave the carriage like this for the rest of the time that we're knitting. All right, let me cast on with my waist yarn. This is not a gauge swatch, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so it's a little easier to deal with. So I bring half of my needles forward and then waist yarn, cast on comb. I'm just gonna try not to get it stuck in too much of the yarn here. There we go. And put that in the clip over there. Bring the rest of the needles forward. And there's not quite enough weight on this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the edge weights already. Alright, so this is our waist yarn, and the first thing we're going to do is practice the folded hem. So I'm going to cut my waist yarn, and if you need a refresher on this, you can always go back to the hat video. Tuck that away, and then grab my second yarn, turning my tension up, and we are going to knit one row with my main yarn. And then turn the tension down a notch and knit a few more rows. And I'm moving the claw weights up because this needs a little bit more weight and it's starting to pull in. This is just a test swatch so it's okay if it's not perfect. Like I've got a long loop here because my tension wires keep getting caught on my camera. Okay, we'll call that good. And we're gonna pull the weights off, including the cast on comb, and then take our transfer tool and find these live stitches where they meet the waist yarn and rehang them on the machine. So we can just go through and get a couple at a time. And there's the last one. And then we push all the needles back and we rehang the cast on comb. And these are just metal hooks so we can shove them in there anywhere. And I'm trying not to catch the tail too much. And I'm feeling this is gonna need more weight. So I'm just gonna take a second cast on comb and shove it in there. And then we turn our tension up one above where it was before. I was already at tension nine, so I'm just gonna leave it at nine. We knit one row. And then you go back to your main tension and keep knitting. And that is our folded hem, and I'm getting loops again. Let me just put my claw weights on there. Okay, so that is a refresher on how to do the folded hem. The other technique that we're using in this sweater is increases. Now, there are a couple different ways to do increases, but I'm gonna show you the one that we're gonna use for this particular sweater. 
The way that you want to do an increase is bring out a new needle on the edge. You're gonna take either a two or a three prong transfer tool. You can do it with the one and just move one stitch over, but we're going to mattress stitch these side seams and it makes for a much neater seam and it's much easier to sew up if you have a few extra needles on the edge and it's not just like the increase is directly on the edge. So we're gonna pull these three out so that the latches go past the loops. Pull them back in with our other hand, lift up, and move everybody over one needle. So, this creates an eyelet right here. And you can leave that eyelet there, it's a stylistic choice. You'll just have like open eyelets along your inner arm if that's what you want. Or you can fill that in, and I recommend filling it in. And the way that you do that is you move over one stitch either to the left or to the right, it doesn't really matter. And you pick up the loop right below where you are. So we see I have this loop here and you pick it up and you put it on that empty needle. And we're gonna do these increases evenly. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So pull out, push in, lift up, move over one, back on the needles and then find the bump of the stitch below and put it on that empty needle. And there we have increases. And then keep knitting. Let me show you that again. So bring out a new needle, pull out past the latches, push back in, lift up, move over, Grab the pearl bump of the one below and put it on the empty needle. And then the same thing on the other side. And this gets faster as you build the muscle memory and figure out how to do it. And just keep getting. And I'm getting loops on the side because my tension wires keep getting caught on my camera. You probably won't have this problem. Okay. So this is how we're gonna make the sleeves. They're gonna start at the wrist with the folded hem and then increase up to the top. Now, for the shoulder shaping of the main body of the sweater, we're going to use short rows. And we've already put our carriage in to hold so that the, if you push needles all the way forward, they won't knit back. Short rows are called short rows because you're not knitting the full row, you're just knitting a partial row. And the way that we do that on the machine is by pushing needles all the way forward. These needles are as far forward as they will go the latches are past the loops. And when we knit one row, these needles don't knit. They're just gonna sit there. And to get the shoulder slope that we want, so it like slopes downwards at an angle, we're going to pull needles in from the outside edge as we go. If we just knit like this and we keep going, this is going to create a hole here. So to prevent that hole, we pull, we pick up the yarn and we loop it under the last stitch so that when we knit the next row, this is going to knit over here and it'll be like a doubled up loop. But before we knit the next row, I'm gonna pull out more needles on the other side. And knit. So we get into kind of a cadence here. When you finish a row, loop over the last needle that you just pulled out and then pull out more into hold. And because we have needles in hold on the edge, the center of this is gonna start getting longer while the edges stay the same length. So it creates kind of a pocket in here. So what you need to do is every once in a while, you need to move your claw weights over so that they are below the working yarn. So back to our cadence, we wrap, and then we bring two more forward. And I'm gonna move that so it's just below the working yarn. We wrap and then we bring two more forward and move the weights over. We wrap, we bring two more forward and we move the weights over. The pattern is going to tell you how many needles you have to hold and how many you need to put into hold each time but we haven't gotten to that part yet. So for our test swatch, we're gonna wrap the last one and let's say this is the end of our shoulder shaping. So at this point, 
we are going to get all the needles back into work. But we cannot put these needles back into work quite yet because we will wind up with this long float here. So we're gonna leave those as is and then push these back just a little bit. If you push them all the way back, then the loops are going to fall off the needle. So you just push them back a little bit and they'll get picked up by the carriage in the next pass. Watch this. And there they are back in work. And now that we're on this side, we can put these needles back into work as well. And there we go. We have our short road shoulders. And then I'm gonna just bind this off and then show you what it looks like when it comes off the machine. So back to our latch hook bind off. And this is another good opportunity to practice that bind off if you're not comfortable with it yet. Okay, we are bound off. I've dropped my hook tool on the floor. Pull off my weights and then pull this off the machine. Is that recording? Yes. Okay. And here is our swatch. Let me pull the waist yarn off. Remember you go on the side opposite the tail. So here's the tail of the waist yarn right here. We're going to cut into that last stitch and then pull on the end and it will come off. And here we have our folded hem. This is gonna be the bottom of the sweater and the cuff of the sleeves. And then we have our increases. And if you look carefully, you can see them here. See, we go from one column here to two columns here. And then that leaves this nice even column on the edge to do our mattress stitch later. And then up at the top, you see we have this angled section here. That's what the short rows give us. And you can skip this step when you get to the final sweater. The sweater is going to drape a little differently, but it's absolutely fine. I recommend trying it though, because short rows come up a lot in machine knitting because they are just so easy to do. All right, those are all the techniques we need for the sweater. So while we're waiting for the swatches to dry, let me talk about the pattern. So I draft my knitting patterns in code because I work with multiple different knitting machines and I work with multiple different kinds of yarn and it's really hard to get any specific gauge on a machine. So it's just kind of like whatever gauge you get and whatever measurements you have, let's build a sweater for you. I do my best, but these patterns aren't perfect. If you run into any issues or anything that doesn't seem right, let me know in the comments what went wrong. I need to know all the measurements that you entered and what you saw that was wrong. I need to be able to reproduce the bug in order to fix it. There are a few measurements you need for this sweater. And I recommend measuring over what you're planning to wear under the sweater. So if you're planning to do a lot of layering, put your layers on and then measure. And let me take off my sweater because I'm planning to wear this over my regular clothes and not over a sweater. You will need a measuring tape. And if you don't have a measuring tape that's flexible, you can use a piece of string. Just get something that's not stretchy, like cotton kitchen twine will work, and then measure it against like a, a yardstick or a measuring tape. There are a few measurements that you need for this. The first one is chest circumference. That's gonna be the widest part of your torso. For me, that's up here. For some of you, it might be a little bit lower. And you should measure not super tight, but like a comfortable distance around your torso. And then the finished length, which is going to be the point from the highest point to where you want it to hit on your waist or your hips. If you're not sure about this, you can find a sweater that you already have that you like the way it fits and measure how long it is and use that as the finished length. Then we have armpit circumference. That's around the meaty part of your armpit. You don't want to pull this too tight. And then hand circumference. I call this hand circumference and not wrist circumference because we need to get the sweater over your hands. So the biggest part of your hand is what you want to measure. And then we're going to measure sleeve length later. After you knit and assemble the body panel, we're going to see where it hangs and then measure down from where it hits your shoulder to your wrist. And I'll walk you through that point when we get there. You also need the gauge information that we're gonna get in a minute from our swatches. But there's one more measurement that I have on this pattern and that is inches of ease. I apologize for all of those of you who are not in the US. I'm using inches and not centimeters. I'm an American. What can I say? Ease is the difference between the size of the garment and the size of the human underneath it. It's not uncommon to have negative ease in knits because they stretch and they are forgiving. So a garment with negative ease is going to be like um, shapewear. It'll be like Spanx. It'll pull you in. 
A garment with zero ease is going to be skin tight, but this is a drop shoulder sweater. It's meant to be worn loose. I would say you want at least four inches of ease, and I'm going to use about six in this pattern. Especially when you're learning, you're probably going to get some things not quite right, so it's better to err on the side of too big rather than too small. When a sweater is too big, you can layer, you can drape it, you can style it. When a sweater is too small, you can't really wear it. Um, and because this is drop shoulder, if it's too small, it's gonna be all weird and bunched up in the armpits. So if your sweater winds up too small, you can unravel it or you can gift it to somebody smaller than you. But if it's too big, it's still probably wearable. You're going to take all these measurements and you're going to plug them into the website and it will give you specific instructions for you and your sweater. If you wind up with a number of stitches that is wider than your bed, you can cut it in half and knit it the front panel or the sleeve in two pieces with just a center seam. If you wind up with more stitches than the size of your bed, please let me know in the comments. It's not something I've run into before, but I suspect it will happen for some people. And if it comes up enough, I'm gonna make a separate tutorial for how to split garments into multiple pieces if you don't have enough space on your bed. All right, there we go. Take your measurements, plug them into the website, and it will give you a pattern. And then we can get started on making the final sweater. Here we are the next day and my swatches have dried. Let's take a look at these. So this was the first one I did and I started it at tension nine and then quickly found that that was too loose and dialed it back down. The swatch is very loose and drapey and it's going to be too loose for the sweater that I wanna make. So when I do in tension nine, this one was at tension one, two, three, four, five, six, tension six. It's a little loose, so it's not quite the tension that I want but I do like the stripes, though I think I'm gonna space them out a little bit more. And then this one was at tension five. This, I think, is the tension I'm gonna go with. Tension five. And then I'm gonna do stripes. I think this was every, this was two stripes of the pink and then six stripes of the, the grayish color. I think I'm gonna do eight stripes of the grayish color and two stripes of the pink because of how much I have of each. And then that'll space out the stripes a little bit more. So. Now that I know what I want to do with my final sweater, I can get the gauge from this swatch. So I can just measure out a two by two square in the center of this swatch, making sure not to stretch it out, and then count the number of stitches and the number of rows in that square. So that comes out to about 13 rows in two inches, which means that it's gonna be six and a half rows per inch. And then if we measure two inches the other way, we get about nine stitches in two inches, which is gonna be 4.5 stitches per inch. And then we can take all these measurements and plug them into the pattern generator. All right, now that we have all the information we need for the measurements and for the gauge swatch for the sweater, we can look at the final pattern. So this is the drop shoulder sweater. And I'm just gonna enter my measurements uh, let's see, my gauge was 4.5 stitches per inch and 6.5. And then the rest of these measurements are correct because these are my measurements because I drafted this pattern and it just makes it easier for me. I think I'm going to do four inches of ease instead of six. And then we're going to come back and we're going to measure for the sleeve length later. So we're going to leave that. So. When you update these values, it will update the pattern automatically. So we can look at this. So I'm going to cast on 94 stitches and then I'm going to knit for the hem and then keep knitting. There are a few instructions here about placing yarn markers. I will show you how to do that when we get to that point. And then we're going to shape the shoulders with short rows and then do a bind off. And then we will assemble the front and the back together and then measure for the sleeves after that. Let's make the sweater. I know I'm gonna be short rowing later, so I want to make sure that these levers are pushed back so that needles that are all the way out and hold won't knit. So the carriage is in good shape. And now that I've plugged everything into the pattern generator, I can just go ahead and knit. I'm gonna use my measurements in this example, but you're gonna to wanna to plug in your own measurements and follow along for your own size. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the body panel, and these are worked bottom up. When you're hand knitting, sweaters are often made top down, but it's much easier to go bottom up on the knitting machine because you get a nicer finish that way. 
Both body panels are exactly the same. And for the first one, I'm gonna cast on 94 stitches onto waist yarn. So the bed is numbered and I can't count. So half of 90 is 45, that's there. And then two more, is that right? I will come back and count in a minute. So we're gonna do the every other needle cast on that we've been doing this whole time. And 45, one, two. Oh, I can't count. <laughs> Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where we're starting. So my waist yarn's a little thick, so I'm gonna turn the dial up and then pull my waist yarn out of the thingy and feed it into the carriage. And then knit one row. And now I'm going to hang my claw weights, my cast on comb, and because I need two of them, I'm gonna use the little extender to hook them together and they're getting caught on yarn off camera. Okay, and then we hang the claw weights, hang the cast on comb right there. It doesn't need to be perfect because this is the cast on edge. And then we're gonna bring the rest of the needles forward. I want 94 stitches. So half of 94 is, half of 90 is 45. 46, 47, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh my god, I can't count. Okay, but this is an easy fix. I can just put another loop on that hook there. <laughs> okay, now I have all the needles I need. It's close enough. It's close enough. I'm going to knit a couple rows. It's starting to pull in, so I'm going to hang my claw weights. All right, and then I'm going to call that good enough. So now we can cut the waist yarn. Put that back up here. And we're not going to worry about stripes for the hem. We're just going to knit with our main yarn. And then my knit my gauge swatch at tension five. So we're gonna go to tension five and then load in my main yarn and reset my row counter because we're counting the number of stitches in the hem now. There we go, row counter is at zero. And then we knit one row. Make sure it's feeding nicely. And then I'm going to turn the tension down one, so down to four, and clip this in here. And then we're going to knit 26 rows total. truck outside you can see it's starting to pull in so I'm going to move the claw weights up keep moving the claw weights up And that's 26 rows. Now we need to rehang these stitches. So all of the weights come off, including the cast on comb. And then we are just going to find the live stitches, which are right down here, and rehang them on the bed. If you need a refresher on this, you can check out the hat video. And once you get the hang of doing this a couple at a time, you can do it a few more at a time. There we go, there's the last one. Okay, now we can push all these needles back. 
There we got our hem down there, and then we can rehang the weights. So I'm just going to stick them in there and trying to get them caught on the long tail and the working yarn. Now that we're here, I'm going to reset the row counter. And then for this one row, I'm knitting the main thing at tension five, but for this one row, I want to knit at tension six because it's got doubled up loops. So I'm going to knit that one row. There we go. And then I'm going to go back down to tension five. Now I need to knit 85 rows to get to where the sleeve will start. And I want to do that in stripes. And I know that I want two stripes of the pink and eight stripes of my main color. So let me feed this in. Okay, so we're down at tension five. So I'm gonna knit one more row. So that's our hem started. And then let me show you one more time how to do these stripes. So we are going to pull the yarn out of the carriage and then loop it around the back. And then this is what these V-shaped things are for back here and loop the yarn under there and then it just stays there. And then we take our second color and we feed it into the main hopper. And I'm gonna knit two rows. And there we go. And then for the next eight rows, I'm gonna pull this out of the carriage and make sure it's clear of the brushes down here and then bring it around the side of the machine and put it in the same V-shaped space and then pull the original yarn back out and feed it in. So be careful to make sure that the yarn is all the way in the feeder. If it's not all the way in there, it might fall out and you might drop a piece off the machine. Don't worry about that too much. It's part of the learning process. And you'll create these floats up the side of the garment as you go. So I'm gonna do eight rows of the main color. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. And it's starting to pull in, so I'm just gonna put my claw weights on the edges here. And then I'm gonna pull my main yarn out of the thing, park it around the side, and then grab my second yarn and put it in the feeder. And knit two. And then we just keep going like that for the rest of the thing. I will come back and tell you about how we're going to mark the underarm when we get there. Here we are. And row. All right, we are at row 85, which means it's time to place our marker for the underarm. Now, the way that you would do this if you were hand knitting is with those little plastic things, but they tend to get caught in the carriage, so we don't use those on the knitting machine. Instead, what we're going to do is make a yarn marker. So I'm gonna grab the end of my waist yarn where are my scissors? And I'm going to cut a small length. It doesn't have to be very long. And I'm going to need one for each side. So let's just cut two. And then I'm going to take my latch hook tool. And I'm going to pull out the work on the left side. And then grab my yarn and make a loop. And then put my latch hook behind the stitch. Past the latch grab the yarn and pull it back in. And then once I have that loop straddled around that stitch, I'm gonna pull it one more time and it's just gonna leave a yarn tail there that I can find later. And let me get you a close up of that on the other side. So when we mark the other side, we're going to pull the work out a little bit. And then we're going to take our latch hook tool and go behind the stitch, grab a loop of our waist yarn and pull it through. And now we're on either side of that stitch. And then we can pull through one more time to create that yarn marker. And now we have it marked on both sides. 
and that's going to tell us where our sleeve needs to be attached later. So now we can just keep knitting. Okay, I'm going to... Now that I have reached the underarm, I need to reset my row counter. And I'm going to keep knitting up to the shoulders. Continuing to go with my stripe pattern. So this is the first stripe of my main color, so I need seven more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I'm going to move my claw weights up. I'm going to pull this out of the carriage and you can see my yarn starting to get a little tangled. I just need to be careful when I grab the next color that it's not too tangled. And then this continues up to the shoulders. I will come back and show you how to do that part when we get there. We've reached the point where it's time to start shaping the shoulders. Now I'm not gonna do any more stripes from here. I'm only gonna work with the main yarn because it's a little difficult to do while also short rowing. So at this point, you can bind off if you want to. You don't have to do the short rows for the shoulders, <clears throat> but it makes it drape a little bit more nicely. And I like the way that it looks. So your pattern will tell you what cadence you need to do this in, but make sure that your carriage will not knit back from hold. So on the LK150, that means that these levers up front are set to position one. And what we're gonna do is for this, for my sweater, I'm going to bring four needles into hold. So that's four here. I'm going to knit one row. Then I'm gonna wrap the last needle. Then I'm gonna bring four needles into hold on the other side. Knit one row. And then wrap the last needle. And then four more needles here. Knit. Wrap. Four more needles. Wrap. Four more needles. Knit, wrap, four more needles. Knit, wrap, four more needles. And I'm moving my claw weights over because we are now building a pocket here. Knit, wrap, four more needles. And we're going to go until we have, what is it? From my pattern, 24 needles into hold on each side. Two, four, six, eight. And so we got a ways to go. Knit, wrap, hold. Knit, wrap, hold. Knit, wrap. Hold. Okay, this is all the needles we need to hold. And then we are going to knit one last chime and we're going to wrap one last chime. And then we are going to gently push these guys back into work. Remember, not all the way back in because if we were to push them all the way back in, the loops would fall off the needles and we don't want that. Knit that row. And then do the same thing with the other side. Okay, everybody is all the way back in work, so it's time to bind off. Remember, we're going to bring all of these needles all the way forward. And then we're gonna bring the work out a little bit. And this can be a little tricky with a piece this big. Pull the yarn out of the carriage, and then grab your latch hook tool and go through the loops. And let me get you a close up on this. So we're going to take our latch hook tool and go through the loop that's still on the needle, push it past the latch, and then grab our working yarn and grab it in the hook and then go through. So now we have the working yarn on top of the machine and a loop below. And then we're going to take the hook and go through the next loop. 
and grab and go through. And this might take a few more fingers and a little more work than what I've got going on here, and that's fine. But the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it. Sometimes you need to pull down on the work to make the loops a large enough size that the hook will fit through them. Um, you may also want to knit one last row that is lar at a larger size so that you have bigger loops to work with. And I just split a stitch there and it doesn't want to knit anymore. <laughs> Oh no! What happened? What happened? All right, I'm gonna pull the hook all the way out and then I'm gonna undo the last stitch and then just grab that loop. Okay, good to go. So I'm gonna go through this stitch and then loopy and then loopy. We want a stable bind off that is not stretchy for the shoulders because if the shoulders were stretchy, they would just keep stretching and the whole sweater would be weirdly stretched out and it wouldn't fit right. So we need it to be stable. Okay, I have almost the whole thing bound off. Now I just need to pull through one more loop and I'm gonna cut my main yarn, park it there, and then pull one more loop through to finish that off. Now, before I take this off the machine, there's a step that I forgot. I need to mark where the shoulders start. And we're gonna do that with a waist yarn yarn marker again. So I'm going to grab two lengths of yarn from my waist yarn. And then on my pattern, it says at stitch 23 on the right and on the left. So we go to stitch, this is stitch 20, one, two, three. This is stitch 23. So I'm just going to pull the work out, go behind that stitch with my latch tool, grab my loop, pull it through and then pull it through again. And then this tells me how far I need to seam the shoulder for the neckline. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side and let me get you a close up on that. So at needle 23, which is right here, I'm gonna pull the work out slightly, put my latch hook tool behind the stitch, grab a loop of my waist yarn, pull it through, and then do that one more time to create a slip knot. And now we have yarn markers. Okay, we are all marked up and ready to come off the machine. Let me pull my weights off, including the ones down here. And then we will just come off the machine. We have our second yarn here. I'm just going to cut this and we will leave in that end later. All right, there's the front of our sweater and it looks a little big right now. That's because it's been all stretched out on the machine. It should go to its normal size after we have blocked it later. Um, but just real quick, I'm going to pull off the waist yarn. So for the waist yarn, we find the tail of the waist yarn and then we go to the other side and we cut that final stitch and then we can just pull it out. And that should come away. And then there we have our folded hem and the rest of our sweater. Okay, this is just one half of the sweater. The back is shaped exactly the same way. So we need to repeat this process one more time. And I'm gonna do that off camera because if you need a refresher on any of this, you can just go back and Watch it again. We have both panels of the body for this sweater. And now we need to join them at the top. So this is the folded hem, that's the bottom. There's the top. And then this is the folded hem for this one. We want them right sides together. So knit side out. And we're going to sew from the side to where we have the yarn marker for the neck. So. Here is the yarn marker for the front and the back, and we are just gonna do that, and that's our shoulder seam. So let me grab my tapestry needle, and I've got enough yarn in this tail here that I'm just gonna use it. I'm not gonna bother to cut a new piece. So I'm just gonna go in, let me flip this over so it's easier to deal with. I am just going to, so I have the long tail attached to the back piece, 
And here's the front piece. And oh no, I dropped a stitch. Let me just pick that up real quick. Okay, that stitch didn't make it into the bind off. So I'm just gonna make sure to catch it as I'm sewing up the seam. So I'm gonna go through one stitch here and then one stitch there. And then here is my dropped stitch. I'm just gonna make sure to grab it and then go around that way. And then one stitch on this side and one stitch on this side. And then pull that tight. Not too tight that it cinches, but we're gonna wind up with a nice shoulder seam there. All right, here we are at the end, right up to the yarn markers right here. So I'm gonna pull this tight, not cinch in the shoulder too much. And then I like to weave my ends in as I go. So I'm just gonna pull this through and then weave it into the seam that I've got going here. This just makes it easier so I don't have to finish it later. All right, we're good. I'm gonna cut that. And now I'm going to remove the yarn markers and I can just take my, my transfer tool and grab into that loop and pull out the yarn. And there we go, we have one shoulder joint. I'm going to join the other shoulder off camera and then show you how we're gonna measure for the sleeves. We have the front and the back joined at the shoulders. This is it right side out. Now we need to measure for the sleeves. And to do that, I need to take the sweater that I'm currently wearing off. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is put the sweater on over your head. There we go. Let me see if I can <laughs> do this at this camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting is terrible, but we're going to do this anyway. So you put the sweater on and see where it fits, where it lands on your arm. And then take your tape measure and measure down from where it hits your shoulder to where you want it to hit on your wrist. And you may want to add an inch or two if you want these to be slouchy sleeves so that they're kind of long and floppy, or you can cuff them if you want. So. For me, that's gonna be about 20 inches and that should be good. And then you're gonna plug that into the pattern and it will tell you how to make your sleeves. I'm wearing a half finished sweater. This is always the fun part of these projects. Okay, it's time to work on the sleeves and ignore my giant mess of yarn up here. I got a lot of barf coming out of this particular skein. So for my sleeve, I need to cast on 45 stitches onto waist yarn. I remember working at tension five. It's 45 stitches, half of 45 is 23, 23-ish. It doesn't have to be exact. So like that's 20, two, three. I can't count. I have a degree in math from like a real university. Come on. <laughs> We're gonna call that good enough that's where our sleeve is gonna start. And we're doing the same cast on we've been doing this whole time, where you bring every other needle out into work, and then you hang the cast on comb, and then you put it in the clippy thing, and then you bring everybody else out into work. That was too many needles, so you can go back. You into the clippy thing and then knit a few rows. All right, that's enough waist yarn for now. And then we go to tension five and we're gonna cut the waist yarn. Put you back in the thingy. Put you in the clip. 
and then feed our main yarn in and reset the row counter. And then I need to knit 26 rows and rehang the live stitches. So one. And we're going to knit this at one tension dial tighter. Let me hang the claw weights because this is starting to pull in. My yarn's getting bunched up in the feeder. Don't do what I did. If you wind up in this situation yourself, you should wind all of this barf or just cut it off before you proceed. But I am already in the middle of filming and decided that I'm just going to deal and sort this out. So I'm going to go careful and watch it. I'm going to go slow and careful and watch this as I go. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. I have a giant mess now. What have I done? Don't do what I did. It was a bad decision. I'm not ready to give up yet. So part of the reason that we use wool and uh, acrylic when you're learning is because it's a little grippy and it's not gonna unravel super quickly. But that means that it's also difficult to detangle when you wind up in a snarled mess like this. Okay, I struggled with the barf on this for a while and eventually I had to cut a section of it out. So let me show you how we're going to avoid playing yarn chicken. So this is the end of the piece that I had to cut. So I'm going to keep knitting. Keeping a very careful eye on the tail and I think I can get one more row. Nope, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk getting one more row out of this. So I'm going to pull it out of the feeder and just let it dangle. I'm not going to worry about it. And then feed the new end into the yarn mast. And then here we go. And then into the carriage. And then I'm going to hold the two ends here together and I will knot them and weave them in later. And then just keep knitting. And then we're going to go on to just tie a square knot here. And that'll hold for now. All right, and there we are to the end of our sleeve, to the cuff of our sleeve. So we take the weights off, including the cast on comb. And then we are going to rehang all of these live stitches back on the bed for the folded hem. Okay, we have our live stitches rehung, so we can put the cast on comb back on and try not to get it caught in the tail here. There it goes. And then we're going to turn this up one for just this one row and then reset the row counter because now we're going to knit the sleeve up. Okay, so we do our one row at the higher tension value. And then we go back to what we were knitting the main thing at, which is five. And for this sleeve, we are going to knit 117 rows, increasing one stitch each side every five rows until we hit 90 stitches. We want to knit stripes while also increasing. And the way that I'm knitting the stripes is that I'm doing two rows of the pink and then eight rows of my main color but I also want to increase every five rows. When I'm working with a piece this complicated, sometimes I just take and I write down all the rows where something happens. So like at row five, I'm gonna increase, but then at row eight, I'm gonna change yarns. Uh, this piece is simple enough that I think I can keep it in my head, but we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> so we're gonna knit the second row. And then I'm going to switch to pink yarn. And we are going to knit three rows. And that takes us to row four. And then we're gonna swap out for the main color in our stripe. And then 
Here we are at row five. So this is a multiple of five, so we need to increase on this row. Remember, I showed you how to do this on the test swatch. What you want to do is bring a new needle forward on the edge and then take a multi-prong tool, either two or three, pull the last three needles out past the latch, push them back with your other hand, lift them up, and move everybody over one. And then come over one stitch to the inside and grab the purl bump from the previous row and put it on that empty needle. And that will fill in. And you do the same thing on the other side. You can see the latch is closed on that, so let me just open that up. And then grab the purl bump and fill it in. And this piece is gonna get wider as it goes up, so we're going to have to keep moving the weights. So. We knit one row and we need eight of this main color. So one, two, three, four. And here we had a multiple of five, so it's time to increase again. And pick up the pearl bump. Make sure that latch is open. Pick up the pearl bump. And I've lost track of how many rows I knit, so I'm just gonna count up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna swap yarns. One, two, and then swap yarn. And then we've hit a multiple of five, so it's time to increase again. I'm going to move my claw weights up because this is growing bigger. So we knit one. Two, three, four, five, six, and we hit a multiple of five, so it's time to increase again. And now that we've hit the cadence, I know that I need to knit two more rows of my main color before I switch. And the instructions tell you to increase every however many rows until you reach however many stitches. And you're going to meet that number of stitches before you get to the final number of rows. Just keep knitting straight up after that. Don't worry about increasing after that. So I will come back when we get to the top of the sleeve and show you how to finish this thing off. This is my last increase, and then I will be at the width that I need for the final sleeve. And I just need to keep knitting until I get to 117 rows. All right, that's the final sleeve. Now the instructions stay scrap off. And when I say scrap off, I mean take this off on waist yarn because we are going to join it to the body and attach it later. So I'm gonna cut my contrasting yarn so that I can feed my waist yarn back into the carriage. And then we are gonna cut the main yarn and leave a long tail to weave in later. Pull that out of the carriage. Feed in my main yarn, my waist yarn, and then we 
we're just going to knit a bunch of rows. And my feeders got tangled. This is just to secure the stitches and I'm going to knit a few more at a tighter tension so it doesn't unravel as easily. Okay, now we can cut the waist yarn. That back in the feeder and then take off all the weights. You don't have to remove the weights at this point, but if you don't, you will probably drop them all on your toes and that's a bad time. Okay, I like to pull down on the work here, and then we're just gonna run the carriage across. And it comes off the needles. Here's our finished sleeve. We are going to make one more of these, and then I will show you how to attach it to the body of the sweater. And it looks like there's a minor imperfection here where some of the yarn got caught, but it's not too visible from the outside. I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, let me make one more and then I'll be back. Okay, here's my second sleeve and here is my first sleeve. And I'm going to pull the waist yarn off of the folded hem before I do the next step on here. So I'm going to find the tail of the waist yarn and make sure you're getting the folded hem and not the live stitches. We wanna keep the live stitches. I'm going to cut one leg of the last stitch, come on. and then pull on the tail. There we go for that one. Okay, now we have these two sleeves and we have this partially assembled body and everything's getting caught in all of my tools on the table. So we could manually sew these sleeves onto the side, but instead I want to join them on the bed. And that's what we did when we added yarn markers as we were knitting up. Um, so we added yarn markers where the sleeve is gonna start on the body panel on the other side. So we are going to rehang these stitches on the bed. And let me get my sleeves out of the way for now. So we know that we have 90 stitches, 90 live stitches at the top of the sleeve. So we need to pick up 90 stitches along the edge of the body panel. And we wanna do this with the right side facing us. So we have the knit side facing us and the seam is going to be facing away from us. And the first thing I like to do is find zero. And then on the very edge of the stitches on either side of the center seam, I'm just going to hang it, hang one stitch here. And then come over and find the yarn marker and just grab a very end stitch and put it on the last needle. And then the same thing on the other side. So here's my yarn marker. There's my stitch. We go here. And this will even itself out in the end. But what we want to do from here is pick a middle point, grab a stitch on the very end on the very last column, and then hang that on a needle. Let me get you a close up of that. So we're going to pick a midpoint between two needles that are already selected, and we're going to go into the very, very edge stitch and hang it on a needle. And then just keep picking midpoints and putting them on. This is not a one-to-one -one correlation between edge stitches and needles because the stitches are a little bit shorter than they are wide and it doesn't matter to pick these up on an even cadence we just need to make sure that we pick up enough to fill the needles that we have out and try not to pick up two that are part of the same stitch like i don't want to put another needle in this hole here i want to come into the own stitch there And then we're just gonna go all the way across. Okay, we have the full side 
hung back on the machine. And now we're going to take one of the sleeves and making sure that it is the wrong side facing you, we are going to rehang these live stitches on top of the stitches that we already picked up from the side of the sweater. And I like to go right to left with this because I am right-handed. So I'm gonna find the first one and make sure the wrong side is facing you. And on this one, we are gonna pick up all the stitches. And I'm carefully keeping the floats along the edge of the body panel out of the way. Those are just gonna get caught up in the seam when we knit this. Okay, there we have all of our stitches on the machine. Now, we're gonna knit one more row here to make it a little bit easier to bind off. But in order to get that to knit nicely, the first thing we're gonna do is bring all of the needles all the way forward. This way when the carriage passes, all it needs to do is pull the needles back and not push them out. And then I'm going to hang my weights. Remember, we always need weights or it's not gonna knit correctly. Okay, we're in there good. And right now I have my carriage set so it won't knit back to hold, but I need it to knit back from hold now. So I'm gonna push these levers forward. I'm also going to push the needles back a little bit because sometimes they don't want to knit all the way. Okay. And then make sure to feed your yarn back into the carriage. Go to your main tension, yarn in carriage, and then we're going to knit one row very carefully and slowly. Okay. Now we have the sleeve joined to the body. And then we're just going to do a plain old latch hook cast off for this. So bring everybody out into hold and then bring the work forward a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my hook and I'm going to go through and latch everybody up. we have this all latch hooked off. So I'm gonna pull off the weights and then I'm going to pull it off the machine and get my loops out of the way. You're recording, aren't you? Okay. And then here we have a sleeve attached to the body. And I'm gonna pull the waist yarn off and this will just unravel because this is the live edge here. Come on. Oh, I split some stitches in some places. This happens occasionally. Okay. And there we have a finished sleeve and we will just weave in the ends later. And it's not a very bulky seam and we can remove the yarn markers at this point. Just pull them out. Okay, now we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. I recommend at this point trying this on and flapping about and seeing how it fits. There's nothing you can do to change it significantly at this point, but it's just part of the fun of making a sweater is trying it on when it's half finished. All right, let me do the other side and then I will show you how to finish the whole sweater off. I have both sleeves joined now. Look at that. That's most of a sweater. So the next steps from here are to actually join the side seams and the sleeves. So we are gonna start at the bottom here and go around the corner and then go up through the armpits and to the sleeve and then finish off with the folded hem here. If you need a refresher on the mattress stitch, go check out my hat video me pull a long thread. This is probably not going to be long enough. I'll probably have to stop and secure it and start a new one somewhere in the armpit, but that is okay. So I have a tapestry needle somewhere. There we 
we go. And we are going to start on the inside of the folded hem down here. Pick up two stitches just along the edge. Leave a long enough tail to weave in later and then pick up two stitches over here. And this continues like this all the way up the side. Forever and ever and ever and ever. And I will come and show you when it's assembled. Okay, I have assembled the sweater. Let me find the top of it. I just went up the side seam through the folded hem up to the armpit and down to the sleeve. And I have woven in all of my ends. I like to do that before I block, which makes it a little bit easier. So this is done for certain values of done. Because this is wool, I mean, it's a wool acrylic blend, but it needs to be blocked to get into its final form. This will help set the stitches and help get the final shape of the sweater. And let me show you how I go through that process. Cold water. Some wool wash. And a sweater. Wool soaks up a lot of water. And I'm just going to gently Massage this, not agitate it too much. Just to get the soap distributed through it. And don't stretch it out, don't wring it out, just be very gentle with it while it's wet because it's much easier to distort the shape of the yarn and the stitches at this point. Now I'm going to let this sit for a good 15 minutes and then come back and rinse it. Here we are about 15 minutes later. I'm just gently squeezing the water out. Now I'm gonna rinse it in cold water again. And one more rinse. Okay, I think I've gotten as much water as I can out of this, so I'm going to take it over to a towel and then roll it up to get the rest out. So I'm just going to lay out a towel and then grab my sweater. I'm not trying to achieve any specific shape here. I just want it to be roughly sweater shaped, so rectangular. I'm not gonna stretch this out. I'm not gonna pin it. Mostly what I wanna do is get the water out. And then this sleeve here. And this is not the final state we're gonna leave it in. So this is just the first roll up. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to slowly roll it up. And this will sandwich the fabric between multiple layers of towel to absorb all of the remaining water. Well, most of the remaining water. And then the easiest way to press all of this out of here is to stand on it. You can see it's soaking through my towel, which is what I want. I'm just going to turn it.
All right, my first towel is soaked through, so let's do this one more time. And more walking. That's probably about the most of the water that we're gonna get out of this sweater. So I'm just going to carefully reshape it so it's rectangular and get some of these wrinkles out. And then we'll let it dry the rest of the way. And that's a sweater. Here is my sweater blocked and dried. As you can see, it's pretty basic, but it is a sweater. The neckline is entirely shaped by the way that the stockinette naturally curls. So you don't need to do any extra, like put things into hold and decrease and increase. This sweater is reversible, so it's the same front and back. It is a very basic sweater, yes, but I encourage you to make at least one before you move on. Making a whole garment will help you practice all the techniques that you need to make more complex things and get you more comfortable with your machine as you go. A reminder that I do my best with these patterns, but they aren't always perfect. So please let me know in the comments if you run into any issues. And a reminder to let me know if you run into problems where you wind up with a panel that's larger than the size of your machine. I can make a separate tutorial for that. This is part of my big grand plan to create more machine knitters, so I want to hear from y'all. What other beginner patterns do you want to see? What other kind of garments do you want to make on the LK150? I will see what I can do to help you get started. Thanks for following along with this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting!